The honor of being the first enterprise in space would go to the NX-class Enterprise NX-01, which launched in 2151 under the command of Captain Jonathan Archer. This ship was one of the most important vessels in Earth's history since it was the first starship to be fitted with a Warp 5 engine. The NX-01 Enterprise was the prototype for a new class of starship. It was a smaller and less advanced vessel than the later Enterprise ships, but it was equipped with a variety of new technologies for its time, including advanced propulsion and powerful weapons systems. Early Earth ships were capable only of speeds in the region of Warp 2. At this speed, a journey between nearby stars could still take several years. However, at Warp 5, those same journeys would take only a few weeks, so the development of the Warp 5 engine was a huge priority. The most significant work on the Warp's engine was done by Henry Archer. His son, Jonathan, a noted test pilot who had been the first man to break the Warp 2 barrier, was assigned as Enterprise NX-01's captain. The ship remained under his command throughout her operational lifespan, and her crew made first contact with dozens of intelligent species and famously laid the groundwork for the foundation of the United Federation of Planets in 2161. Miraculously she survived her mission intact and became a museum ship. The ship has a total length of 225 meters, or 738 feet, and has a total of seven decks. In addition, it can accommodate about 83 personnel and has a maximum warp speed of warp 5. Thank you Raid Shadow Legend for sponsoring this video. Raid Shadow Legend is completely free and easy to play casually, with millions of players and over 80 million downloads already. The game has great PC quality graphics but is on a mobile phone. In addition, there are over 650 completely unique champions to collect from different factions. Let's talk champions. Raids got nearly 700 of them and recently they added a super cool new faction called the Sylvan Watchers. You've got forest elves, you've got scary looking tree spirits, you've even got living rock monsters. The Sylvan Watchers basically have it all as a faction, so let's find out more about their history within the world of Galeria. And to kick off the new year, there's a fresh raid update with a bunch of new features including a new season of the Forge Pass for all your artificers, the Plarium Points program where you can earn in-game goodies including a legendary champion. Raids got something extra special happening now they've released a legendary champion based on MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. You can get Ronda for free right now whether you're a new or a long-time player just by logging into Raid. All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th and Ronda's yours. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you also use the special promo code Raid Ronda, available for all users, new and old, and receive many helpful items for the game. Check the available promo codes in the description below. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet click my link in the description, or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $35. We're talking a free epic champion Yuten, 100k silver, 50 gems and 2 epic skill tomes. All these treasures will be waiting for you here. The next Starship Enterprise was a Constitution-class vessel that was launched in 2245 under the command of Captain Robert April, who completed a five-year mission of deep space exploration. This Enterprise, the NCC-1701, was then commanded by two of Starfleet's best-known captains. Christopher Pike assumed command in 2250 and completed two five-year missions that are among the most famous in Federation history. During his command, Pike was joined by the first Vulcan to serve in Starfleet since the foundation of the Federation. At the end of Pike's first mission, the ship underwent a major refit that saw the crew complement increase from 203 to 430. After 11 years in command, Pike was promoted to fleet captain, and command passed to James T. Kirk who became one of the most admired captains in Starfleet history. The USS Enterprise was fitted with the matter, antimatter warp engines that gave her a regular cruising speed of warp 6 and could maintain speeds of warp 8 and above for limited periods of time. The warp engines were the ship's primary power supply, with the impulse engines offering a backup, but if they failed the ship could survive on battery power for approximately a week. At sublight speeds, the vessel used conventional impulse engines. The main engines relied on dilithium crystals to focus the warp reaction, 
and since at this point in history, they could not be grown or recrystallized on board the ship. As was standard practice for most Starfleet vessels, the ship's design was divided into three distinct areas, a saucer section that contained the main bridge, most of the crew quarters, and the impulse engines. The engineering hall contained the warp drive systems, the shuttlecraft hangar deck, the main navigational deflector, and finally the twin nacelles that generated the warp field. Although ship's primary mission has always been peaceful exploration, voyages into deep space are extremely dangerous, so the NCC-1701 was fitted with state-of-the-art weaponry. Photon torpedoes with a range of 750,000 kilometers could be fired from the underside of the saucer which also housed massive phaser banks. The ship's computers used Richard Daystrom's revolutionary duotronic circuitry, and the ship's hull was fitted with powerful sensor arrays that provided data to the science labs. The ship has a total length of 289 meters or 948 feet, has a total of 23 decks, can accommodate about 203 crew members, and has a maximum warp speed of warp 8.4. Since Enterprise's mission involved extensive periods away from Federation space, she was almost completely self-sufficient. In 2269, the Enterprise returned to Earth and underwent a major refit under the command of Captain Willard Decker. Kirk resumed command in 2271 to deal with the massive entity, a mission during which Decker was lost in action. After this, the Enterprise refit became Kirk's flagship and was engaged in further deep space missions before she was assigned to Starfleet Academy as a training vessel under the command of Captain Spock. The refit was the most extensive the Enterprise underwent during her lifetime, and involved an almost complete rebuild of the ship. This level of refit had always been part of the mission plan for Constitution-class ships, and the Enterprise was just one of several in the class that underwent the procedure, which greatly extended their potential operational life. The warp engine was upgraded to serve for another 15 years. Even though the structural frame of the ship was on their predecessors was retained, the hull plating was completely renewed. The warp engine upgrade to the refit Constitution class ships was a significant improvement. The impulse engines were replaced with entirely new models. The phasers were rerouted through the engines to boost their power, though this had the side effect of knocking them out in the event of a main engine failure. In fact, a considerable number of airlocks and docking ports were added to the ship, and they could now be found on the side of the engineering hull, on the torpedo bay, and on the top and underside of the saucer section. The Broussard ram scoop, warp nacelles, and pylons were replaced with newer, more efficient designs that improved the ship's top speed. These slightly larger nacelles increased the Enterprise's length from 289 meters to 305 meters. Significant changes were also made to the saucer section, the overall size was increased to accommodate extra facilities, and a new bridge module was installed, which now included an auxiliary airlock where shuttles could dock. The ship measured 305 meters or 1,000 feet in length, has a total of 21 decks, can accommodate about 504 crew members, and had a maximum warp speed of warp 8.7. The refit Enterprise was seriously damaged when the Genesis device was detonated in the Matara Nebula and was subsequently destroyed in orbit around the Genesis planet. Even though the refit and Enterprise A were virtually identical in appearance with a few subtle differences, the Enterprise A was another Constitution-class ship, the USS Yorktown, which was, after the destruction of the original Enterprise, recommissioned as the Enterprise NCC 1701A in 2286 and eventually retired from service in 2293. The bridge was in its customary location on Deck 1 and at least three different designs were used during the ship's service. The officers had a private dining hall in the saucer section, which was often used to entertain guests. Officers had crew quarters similar to those on the previous Enterprise. The brig was located in the bowels of the engineering hall, and it was designed to be escape-proof. The Enterprise A had a vertical warp core similar to that of the Galaxy class of 80 years later. The core could be accessed through main engineering on Deck 15. Similar to the refit, the ship was measured at 305 meters or 1,000 feet in length, 
had a total of 21 decks, can accommodate about 504 crew members, and had a maximum warp speed of warp 8.7. The Enterprise B was larger and more heavily armed than the Constitution-class ships, and they are often considered the successor to the Constitution-class design with a more modern and streamlined appearance. Work on the Enterprise B began in 2288 as part of Starfleet's project to replace the aging Constitution-class ships with larger and faster vessels. She was formally commissioned in Earth space dock in 2293. During a shakedown cruise, the Enterprise B was badly damaged when responding to a distress call from vessels carrying refugees stuck in a space anomaly called Nexus. It limped back to space dock for repairs and stayed there for several months before being able to join active service. Even though the secondary hull was designed with plenty of space allocated for cargo, the ship was also designed as a heavily armed vessel for combat as much as exploration. The Excelsior-class ships have a distinctive flattened secondary hull with a bulge in the midsection, which is connected by a larger neck to the primary hull. The fundamental engineering principles behind this class of ship drew heavily on the innovations developed by Captain Montgomery Scott during his revolutionary work on the upgrade of the Constitution class. The Enterprise B reached its end of the line when in 2329. Starfleet received the report from the ship that the crew contracted a dangerous infection. There was no further communication from the ship and it was never found, so it is classified as missing in action, presumed destroyed. Measuring around 467 meters or 1,532 feet, with a total of 32 decks, the Excelsior class can accommodate up to 503 personnel and has a top warp speed of warp 9.2. The next Enterprise was an Ambassador-class ship that was launched in 2332 under the command of Captain Rachel Garrett. The Enterprise-C has managed to have a similar design language as the Enterprise-A, while being a perfect transition between the Excelsior and the Galaxy-class ships that came before and after. Just like its predecessor, it has two separate hulls, a primary and secondary with interconnecting dorsal. In 2344, the Enterprise-C was destroyed while responding to a distress call from the Klingon outpost on Narendra 3, which was under attack by four Romulan ships. The loss of the Enterprise played a vital role in establishing peace between the Federation and the Klingon Empire, since the Klingons greatly admired the crew's willingness to sacrifice their ship and their lives in the face of insurmountable odds in an effort to save a small number of Klingons. The Ambassador class has a total length of 526 meters or 1,726 feet, a total of 36 decks, and can accommodate about 503 personnel with a maximum warp speed of warp 9. Starfleet took the decision to reserve the name Enterprise for one of the Galaxy-class ships, Work on the Enterprise NCC-1701D, the third Galaxy-class ship, began in 2350. Similar to the Starfleet older vessel's design, the ship had a large, oval saucer-shaped primary hull, connected with a thick neck to the engineering hull, with a pair of elongated warp nacelles mounted on either side. The Enterprise D also featured a number of new design elements, including advanced deflector shields, a hollow deck, and a highly advanced computer system with newly developed isolinear circuitry that replaced aging duotronic systems. Commanded by Captain Jean-Luc Picard, the Enterprise-D was launched in 2363 and served for just eight years as the flagship of Starfleet, before she was destroyed during an operation to prevent the destruction of the Viridian system in 2371. Despite her brief operational life, the Enterprise-D had an extremely eventful existence and made more of an impact on the history books than any Starfleet vessel since Captain Kirk's Enterprise more than a century earlier. The Enterprise D was the first Enterprise to carry a civilian population, which included the families of Starfleet personnel. All non-essential personnel could be evacuated to the saucer section, which could then detach from the engineering hull and retreat to safety under its own impulse power. Meanwhile, the remaining engineering section, which was capable of flight and optimized for combat, could engage the threat. Amenities included individual plush rooms for personnel, a bar and restaurant called Ten Forward, a theater, a salon, a repamat, a gymnasium, and even classrooms for the children. 
Best of all were the 16 holodecks that created fully immersive computer-generated worlds. The Enterprise D was built at the Starfleet Yards in the orbit of Mars, and was launched in 2363. She was a galaxy-class starship, the largest and most advanced vessel that Starfleet made at that time. She retained the same basic layout as the earlier Enterprises, with a saucer section and an engineering hull that had two warp missiles attached by two pylons. The ship has a total length of 641 meters or 2,103 feet. A total of 42 decks can accommodate about 1,014 personnel and about 6,000 in an emergency, and had a maximum warp speed of warp 9.6. The Enterprise was a sovereign class starship, which was an even more advanced class of vessel than the Galaxy class. It had a long, slender primary hull connected directly to the engineering hull, with a pair of elongated warp nacelles mounted on either side. The decision was taken to christen the Enterprise E, following the destruction of her predecessor. The ship was a sovereign-class vessel that was launched from Earth's San Francisco yards in the year 2372. Starfleet opted to make the next Enterprise a sovereign-class ship and gave the name to a vessel that was already nearing completion. Following Starfleet's initial encounters with the Borg, it recognized the need for a heavily armed, more compact ship that could withstand attack from superior Borg vessels. The vessel, which entered service in 2372, was a smaller, faster vessel than her predecessor. Unlike the Galaxy class, there was no provision for families and she had a smaller crew. Despite her heavy armaments, the Enterprise was still principally a research and exploration vessel, with a full complement of science labs and the appropriate mission specialist. However, because of the period in which she operated, the Enterprise spent a significant amount of time involved in military operations. She used the latest weapons throughout her career, including quantum torpedoes and randomly modulated phasers, both of which had been developed to fight the Borg. During one of these refits, the ship's interior was given a new configuration, increasing the number of decks to 29. The ship's more compact shape made her a more powerful ship in combat, but still followed the basic layout favored by Starfleet for over 200 years. The saucer had been elongated to become an oval, but was still a distinct section that contained the crew quarters and the majority of the science labs, while the secondary hull contained engineering systems. The most significant weapons upgrade involved the torpedoes. The ship carried the latest quantum torpedoes and had a far greater yield than their predecessors. In addition, the ship's computer core used the latest bioneural circuitry, a synthetic cells to process data faster than traditional isolinear optical circuitry. While the Sovereign class was refitted, it was more of a minor upgrade that didn't change much visually. The Sovereign class was longer than the Galaxy class but was smaller in terms of habitable volume. It measured a total length of 685 meters or 2,247 feet, had a total of 24 decks, can accommodate about 1,500 personnel, and had a maximum warp speed of warp 9.985. Throughout the history of Starfleet, the name Enterprise has been associated with legendary ships, spanning over several hundred years starting with the Enterprise NX-01 to the Enterprise-E. The adventures of the Enterprise are legendary, and will continue to spark the imagination of countless fans of the series for generations. I didn't include the Enterprise J due to its brief history. It was a 26th century Federation Universe-class starship operated by Starfleet in a possible future. I also wanted to thank Mateo Sid for helping with this video. So, what is your favorite Enterprise? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I see you guys next time.